Living as a millennial in a post-pandemic world, the number one thing that I spend money on now besides Bitcoin is weddings. 30 years ago, when you went to a wedding, you would give the couple a check. And if they were smart, they would save that money in some bond fund that was yielding 10% a year and would help them later on when they wanted to pay for a house or save the money for when their kids went off to college. But with the massive inflation that we're dealing with today, you're lucky if that money that you give to your friends at their weddings is enough to pay for a month of their cold brew and avocado toast. The obvious solution to this problem is to gift your friends instead of some worthless check. Bitcoin, the hardest money that's ever been invented. But how do you gift physical Bitcoin? Is it even possible? If you guys watched the end of the video, I'll be showing you how to use one of these. It's called an Open Dime from the company CoinKite. And I'll show you how it solves this exact problem of gifting physical Bitcoin to people. And this way, instead of eating cricket burgers every day for lunch 20 years from now, your friend's kids will instead get to enjoy a nice juicy steak. So go down below and smash the like button for steak and let's love level up your brains. All right, guys, so the issue with using something like this Ledger hardware wallet that we've reviewed on the channel in the past to gift physical Bitcoin is that you have initiated this Ledger hardware wallet, and so it already has a private key. And so when you give that Ledger hardware wallet full of Bitcoin and a private key that you generated to someone else, they have no way to know that you're not just going to take all the funds out of that wallet at some point in the future. So our device that transfers Bitcoin physically, it needs to have a mechanism where it can make make sure that the gifter of the Bitcoin can't ever take the Bitcoin back from the person that they've given it to. And it would be really great if the device had some sort of physical sign that the private key had never been generated or had never been seen by someone else before. So let's see what happens when we plug in an open dime to a computer for the very first time. Got my little USB adapter situation here. I'm going to plug in an open dime. And you can see that when I plug it in for the very first time here, it's giving a green light. And we'll see when I open the open dime on my Mac here, I can click on this read me dot text. This open dime is fresh and unused. It hasn't picked up a private key yet. It needs more random numbers. All you have to do is save files onto this virtual drive. It will add all the randomness from those files into its own random number generator. It doesn't matter what the files are and they are not preserved. Photos that only you have would be great or you could save bits from random.org or this other place where you can get random stuff. Once you've saved at least 250k of random bytes, your new payment address will be automatically generated. You may see a warning about ejecting disks before unplugging them, but that's safe to ignore. And then here's some instructions if you run into any issues on Mac OS or Linux. And then there's a section down here telling you that if there's a bunch of flashing red lights that the open dime has been already broken and that you shouldn't, you know, use this open dime because it's been sweeped. Before. So let's close out from this. And if we click on index.html, we get a little warning that we're agreeing to their terms of service and we can click on okay. We can verify here that our open dime is new and unused. And then it shows us the steps to generate a private key. It basically says the exact same thing that we just read in that readme file. So I'm going to just eject the open dime real quick. And I'm going to show you guys what happens now when you plug in an open dime to a block clock. They're both made by the same company CoinKite. So there is a cool little interaction here. So you can see hopefully there's this little USB on the block clock You can just plug this in. It will flash green there for you. And you can see that the open dime is factory fresh. It says no private key has been picked yet and it's new. So let's go ahead and unplug this. And now we will go generate our seed by uploading those random images to the open dime. So I plugged the open dime back into the computer and now I'm just going to take some random screenshots of this recording and my screen. So I've taken just a couple random screenshots from my current desktop. I'm fairly certain that these screenshots have never appeared anywhere else before. And so it's taking the bytes from these screenshots and it's using the randomness that has been generated by, you know, these just totally random pictures. And it's going to use that seed to create a private key. So let's drag these random pictures onto the open dime here. And it looks like some of those pictures were too big. So I'm just going to put one picture on at a time and see how that goes. If I go back to the open dime. Oop. Okay. So it crashed my finder, but when I came back and opened open dime again, you can now see that there are some extra address files and private key files that have been generated. So let's go ahead and open address.txt and we'll see here in the address.txt file that we have a Bitcoin public key. And when we click on the private key.txt file, we can see it says the private key has been sealed. So I don't know what the private key is. 
is. I'm still the person that's giving away this Bitcoin. I have never seen the private key that was just generated by those screenshots that I pulled into the Open Dime. And if I click onto the index.html here, I can see that the public Bitcoin address that was showing up in address.txt is showing up for me here. I can check the balance and I can view this Bitcoin address on any of these public block explorers. So I have a lot of quick and easy links available to me here. So all I'm going to do to fund this Bitcoin address is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to copy and then I'm going to come up here to my strike wallet. I like using strike because I like spending my US dollar strike balance as Bitcoin, but you could use any Bitcoin wallet, whether it's blue wallet or your Coinbase Bitcoin wallet or your Gemini Bitcoin wallet or whatever it is. Within strike, I'm going to come up here to the top right and click on pay and I'm going to paste the Bitcoin address here and then I'm going to send 20 bucks from strike to my open dime and I'm going to have a little four cent minor fee and I'm going to confirm the transaction. So strike said payment successful and so now I'm going to open one of these blockchain explorers. Let's go to blockchain.com and we can see that I have an unconfirmed transaction from my strike wallet and that the current value of this address is about twenty dollars and one cent which is pretty much what I just sent from strike. So now if I go back to this open dime page and I click on verify I can verify that my open dime has control over the secret private key and that no one has viewed the private key before and that there's currently about twenty dollars or eighty eight thousand sats on this open dime and again that's just from the transaction that I sent from my strike wallet and if you were on the go you could verify these funds in the exact same way by just plugging in your open dime into your iPhone or your Android phone using an adapter right you need a lightning to USB or a USB C to USB to plug this into your phone and then all you would do is open up some Bitcoin wallet like Samurai wallet and that wallet would do this exact same thing here and it would verify for you the amount of Satoshis that are sitting within the open dime so let's exit out of this for now and if you wanted to you could also fund this open dime using the QR code.jpg that was generated here I'm not going to do that because I just funded it with strike so now I'm going to exit out of this and just unplug the open dime and I'm gonna plug it back into the block clock you can see the green light and you can see that it's sealed which again just means that the private key has never left the open dime and no one has ever looked at what the private key is and then it also gives you a QR code right on the block clock so if you did want to send Bitcoin without using a computer if you did just want to use your block clock sort of a niche use case but you could do it you could scan that QR code and deposit Bitcoin onto the open dime okay so now let's pretend we're 20 years in the future I'm my friend's kid from this wedding I've been eating a bunch of cricket burgers I feel like because of all of the insect protein and now I'm trying to get some steak using the Bitcoin that's stored on this open dime so I'm gonna unplug the open dime and I'm gonna see this little hole right here that says Bitcoin and so you're gonna get either a nail or in this case I'm using a sim card tray opener I hope that that will work if it doesn't work I might get a thumbtack or something basically what we want to do is we want to poke a hole through this thing right here that's going to disconnect that little circuit on the backside and that is going to expose the private key so let's put our thing in here and we'll try to jam this out of place All right, so we've gone fully through here. You can see it's all the way through. I'm gonna try this again and just see if it was totally unsealed at this point. Let's go ahead and plug it back into the computer. And we can see now when we plug it in, it's flashing red like this, which means that we did correctly break the seal. So make sure you go all the way through, actually even the plastic on the backside. When you go to unseal your open dime, you know, 20 years from now, when you're trying to get some steak instead of these cricket burgers. So now if we go ahead and open Finder and click back on the open dime, and when we click on the private key, we will see that this time it no longer says sealed. It shows us the real private key to this Bitcoin address. And when we click into index.html, it now tells us unsealed. Do not send more funds to this address or accept this hardware as payment because I just broke the seal. And so now if I give someone else this open dime, I'm gonna have the ability to sweep this wallet and any funds that ever come into this private key for the rest of time. So do not ever send funds to this address, even if you send it to this address address during this video. This private key is now on the internet for everyone to see. And so any funds that go into this Bitcoin wallet can be immediately stolen from this Bitcoin wallet. If you're your friend's kid though, trying to get some stake, you would realize that you just poked the hole through this and that you were the one that unsealed this open dime. And so next what you would do is you would open your blue wallet app on your computer or any other Bitcoin wallet that you wanted to use. We'll see that blue wallet here is coming online and we'll click on add a wallet, click on Bitcoin wallet and we'll click on import wallet. Next we can enter seed words, a public key, or anything else we've got, and Blue Wallet will do our best guess to import the wallet. So let's go ahead and take the private key 
from privatekey.txt and we'll copy it and we'll paste it into Blue Wallet and let's see if it imports. The wallet has successfully imported and it has a pending transaction, which is the 88,000 Satoshis ETA in three hours that we sent from the strike address. So once this strike transaction gets confirmed in about three hours, I will then be able to send the funds out of Blue Wallet into a wallet that I personally control, like maybe my Ledger Nano S Plus here or my Cold Card Mark IV or another Blue Wallet address that I generate here within Blue Wallet. But I wanna get the funds out of this wallet because this wallet has now been compromised. And I've pasted actually the full private key to this wallet into a computer. And so now it's you know a very hot wallet, right? It went from being this open dime, this thing that no one knew the private key to and was personal to this physical device to now it's out on the internet. It's been connected to this computer. If there's any malware on this computer, someone can get that private key from you know key logging my computer or something like that. I want to make sure that I get all of this Bitcoin out of this wallet as soon as possible. All right, guys, I'm back here a couple hours later. My transaction on my open dime in blue wallet now has six confirmations from strike. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to send all of the Bitcoin from blue wallet. Let's see if I can hit max somewhere. It would be nice if there was just a max button. Use full balance. Yes. So I'm going to send all of the Bitcoin that's currently in this wallet and I'm going to go to my umbral full node. I'm going to go to the lightning node. The interface on umbral now, it looks nice, but it's a little confusing. So here's my Bitcoin wallet. I'm going to click on deposit. I'm going to copy this Bitcoin address. I'm going to come back over to blue wallet. I'm going to paste my umbral address. I'm going to send a note to self open dime transaction and I'm gonna click next and I'm gonna click send now. We can see that the price has fallen slightly and you know I'm paying a little bit to mining fees and so it's only sending $19.13, but I'm gonna go ahead and click send now. So now if I refresh this wallet, we'll see that seven hours ago, I deposited some money from Strike into my open dime. I unsealed my open dime. I got the private key. The fund settled. I sent the funds just now out to my umbral full node and now I have total control over this Bitcoin. If I click back here on my umbral full node, I can see a deposit from a couple seconds ago of about the 88,000 sats that I purchased earlier today on strike. And that's how you use an open dime. Go buy yourself some steak. Next, let's go ahead and see what this looks like now when I plug it into the block clock mini. Plug it in over here. So it's going to show us now, again, blinking red over here, that the open dime has been unsealed and that you should no longer fund this open dime because the private key has been exposed somewhere. So not only can you use these open dimes to gift Bitcoin at a wedding by just slipping it into an envelope. You could also bury a bunch of open dimes across the world and start some sort of one piece-esque treasure hunt for your open dime Bitcoin fortune. Or you could use open dimes to meet and transfer Bitcoin in some sort of in-person transaction. Obviously be careful in situations like that and make sure to bring the right hardware with you so that you can verify the open dime on your mobile device. Or if you're bringing a laptop with you, make sure that that laptop is set up in a way that you can verify what's on the open dime. Go down below and smash the like button if you did learn something from this video so that you YouTube shares it around and we can get more kids on steaks in 20 years and less kids on cricket burgers. Also, if you guys do gift someone an open dime at a wedding, please include them a link to this video so that they can watch this and understand why they would want an open dime in the first place. Hopefully they're not cricket burger people because this video might dissuade them from using the open dime at all. You have to really make sure that they're strongly in the steak camp. And then come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new video. I love you all. Goodbye.